road trip. I'm here in Portland at the workshop of Sir Pyro Glass, who has generously volunteered to help me out with testing and providing lots of interesting ideas for the further development of the integrated lathe workstation concept. What makes this project a little bit difficult and challenging is there's a lot of different kind of lathes out there and a lot of different styles that lathe workers use and made me a little bit kind of nervous to just design it to work with my system and then release it to the general public and you know find out that it doesn't work for other people and so pyro's help has been invaluable in letting me see how it works on a different lathe in a different environment with a different style of work and i think in my last video i was talking about i don't have a cool name for it yet well i think i finally did come up with a cool name I'm going to call it the Torch Armadillo. And in a way, it's somewhat consistent with Octavius Squeezer. And uh, you know, who knows? If you like it, you like it. If you don't, it's still a good tool. So the concept here, this is part of uh, this particular piece is part of a larger concept of a modular workstation and a set of modular accessories because there's so many different lathes out there there's so many different styles the floor mount lathes the bench mount lathes the little dinky lathes like my lit and you this is a vertigo which is a rather large lathe but it's still mounted on a bench some of the larger littons don't have a bench they just have a, a cast iron stand and trying to come up with a set of modular components that can be used with any lathe is is rather tricky and you know progress continues this is a work in progress it's getting a lot closer to release this is the sixth prototype that i've done along the way and just for your information for a little bit of background information one of the early prototypes I actually used an electromagnet system very similar to the Inquala, thinking that, well, it works really well on the Inquala, so maybe it would work really well on a lathe. And it turned out that it, we don't really need that complexity, that magnets introduce size, cost, complexity, and when the power goes out, they drop off, which is a safety problem. And it turns out that for a torch stand for a lathe, all you really need is friction. And I kind of spent some time thinking about how to make a really, really nice uh, adjustable uh, rotary friction joint. And I'll go into a little more detail um, in a couple of minutes when I get down to the details of it. But the concept of this is that there will be some number of standard parts that will be made in reasonably large quantity to keep the cost down that can be assembled in a variety of different ways. And for example, for different lathe uh, heights, all you need to do is change the length of one rod and keep the rest of the parts the same uh, between them. There's also possibilities that it's not only for a lathe. This could very easily be used on a, a hand workbench, and it doesn't have to be for a torch. Other types of sliding stuff could be added. The ideas are flowing like crazy. We've been having brainstorming sessions, and the, the ideas are abundant. And little bit by little bit, as the development continues, we're working on refining it down to, you know, what parts can be produced economically, what parts can glass workers afford, and even more importantly, for glass workers who have the tools and skills to improvise to build stuff, I want this to be an, a kind of an open source, a uh, crowdsourced kind of project. So if somebody else has an idea for, hey, I just thought of something that I can add to this, I'm going to be providing uh, open interfaces 
and lots of attachment points and lots of variations. When it's finally offered for sale, it will be offered as a menu of choices. Oh, I want one of these bases. Oh, I want a horizontal. Oh, do I want a vertical? And to come up with a variety of different components that can be assembled in a way to fit each glass worker's style. Because one thing I've learned about the glass world, there's a lot of variation in not only the equipment that glass workers have, but how glass workers work. So I'm going to move the camera around and talk a little bit more about the details. So the basic torch armadillo consists of a pair of parallel arms, very similar in style and function to the Inquala. And the adjustment in the vertical direction is still, we're still working on it. We haven't come up with a final solution yet. In, in this case, we tried putting a round knob on the axis, and it turns out that, well, you can't get quite enough grip, so the next prototype is going to have a lever. But the vertical adjustment is not done continuously. It's basically you set it for a particular angle, and then while you're using it, the adjustment is all in the various different rotary axes. Now, this particular version is set up for a GTT torch, but I'm thinking about possibilities of making a universal mount that could work with a variety of different torches. The friction mechanism, I tried to make this the nicest friction mechanism that I could think of. It consists of a top aluminum plate, a Teflon washer, a rotating disc of polished steel, another Teflon washer, and then another aluminum plate. The tension is supplied by a fine pitch screw going into a threaded hole with a couple of Belleville washers. And for those who don't know, a Belleville washer is a fairly stiff little spring washer with a, a fairly short travel distance, but it allows you to, with a, a screwdriver tool, with a hex driver tool, nicely adjust the tension to have exactly the tension that you want. And of course, what you're trying to do, you want it to be as effortless to move as possible, but once you let go, you want it to hold position. And that's the nice thing about having it adjustable, that one person's idea of, oh, this feels good to me, may not be the same as another. So this is the basic mechanism of the torch armadillo configured for the vertigo lathe. I also have another prototype that I'm working on, and I might have to move the camera a little to be able to see this a little better, but the idea is that traditional Bunsen mounts, the traditional like Herbert Arnold and the scientific and the various other Bunsen mounts, you have to kind of reach into the hot zone. You have to reach under the hot glass. The Bunsen itself gets hot and you have to kind of like reach into the, the hot zone to move the Bunsen around. The idea here is that you have like a little lever with a hook down in the cold area where you can move your Bunsen around without getting into the heat zone. This is, is still a far earlier prototype, uh, not even nowhere near as mature as the torch arm, but uh, it shows great promise and development continues. So I think that's about all I have to say right now. And I think Pyro is going to do a little demo and show how it's used. So thank you for watching. So in this demo, Pyro is going to be uh, doing a vacuum sleeving operation along with a striping operation. And I'm going to edit and leave out a whole lot because, as you probably already know, glassworking can be a very slow process. And the purpose of this little video is not to teach glassworking. It's just to show how the tool can be used. And so 
Here he is using the tool. Kind of skip ahead a little where he's got his inner tube. He's going to be sleeving the uh, color tube prep over the top of an inner tube. And just working on the ends. The actual operation that I photographed here was a fairly long operation and a lot of it was just the same thing over and over again, so that's why I'm doing the editing. As he's doing the vacuum sleeving operation, it's nice to have the linear rail so that he can slide the torch in a kind of a nice linear motion from one end to another. Now he can move the torch into position for doing some handwork off the lathe. One of the very nice things about the torch armadillo is that unlike the torch mounts that are mounted to the fire carriage, the torch armadillo, you can just get it completely out of the way, which he's not going to show here, but you can imagine how that works. Just slide it to the end of the travel and move it completely out of the way and open up the lathe for use with a hand torch or some other kind of tool. So now he's preparing for striping and he's going to elevate the vertical axis using the not very effective hand knob and boy he had to crank that sucker because a knob doesn't give you much force. And now he's doing some striping. Well, I'm back in the shop after a very interesting and enlightening experience with Sir Pyro and a couple other glass workers, and I'm continuing to evolve the design of what I'm now calling the torch armadillo. So, when it, uh, during the design process, I've gone through a number of different iterations, but during the design process, at one time, I believed that the, the vertical adjustment of the two parallel arms could be simply set for the work being done and locked in place with a screwdriver and then left there for the duration of the work. And it turns out that there was pr pretty much universal agreement that, oh no, it needs to be more easily adjustable because as uh, Pyro showed in the, uh, in the little demo uh, a few minutes ago, sometimes it's important to be able to adjust vertical position while working. So 
I'm now experimenting with a little handle and a couple of Inquala springs so that you the torch is balanced up and down. And of course, this <laughs> raises another question. It's balanced up and down for this particular torch. But what about somebody who wants to run a Herbie or a Carlisle or a Delta Mag or uh, anything? So, you know, this is a part of the general problem of this design. There's many different kinds of lathes, many different kinds of torches and trying to come up with a modular system that works for everybody is a kind of a challenge. And so, anyway, here's what I have at the moment, and the cute little orange handle seems to work reasonably well to lock it. I'm still trying to figure out the geometry is, it, it works, but it's not, it's not the most convenient and the friction material that I'm using uh, between the two aluminum parts works, but I, it may not be optimum, so I'm continuing to experiment with other materials. Um, I've also added a, a knob and a piece of Delrin here to be able to lock it in place along the rail if that's ever necessary. Um, anyway, Development continues. Um, it's very close to release, but not quite ready yet. And for those who have been asking, well, what's it going to cost? Um, that's a, a somewhat challenging question to answer because the way that I calculate cost is based on my machining cost of a production run. And since I've only made prototype parts and have not yet made a production run, it's somewhat difficult to calculate. So anyway, progress continues. Thank you for watching. It's been fun.